Hey guys and gals, and welcome back to part 2 of the Concrete Derry in our modeling and texturing low poly game assets series. If you enjoy it or learn something from the video, consider liking it and consider subscribing for more Blender, Unity 3D coding, and all sorts of other CG related videos. Lastly, don't forget our model, Create Your Way. So we, left, we left off here where we, um, we had our concrete barrier modeled and we had a UV unwrapped. I hop into the UV slash image editor. We had it UV unwrapped, and then we uh, we apply the texture to it, and so we ended up with this result. And we were going to do some texture painting, which is exactly what we're going to do. So um, the objective is to get rid of this seam here, which is actually from the photograph, but. Um, more primarily get rid of the seams like this one here that come from the geometry we don't have to worry so much about the top because we kind of stretch that texture right over but you can see there's a few little errors in here where it didn't line up quite properly so we'll try to fix those um, I'm not gonna go over every single little detail but I'll show you how this works within blender and how the texture painting works best um, to fix things like this, I'm going to show you the techniques and then I'll time lapse my actual doing it and you can obviously, um, every, every little bit's different so I can't show you exactly how to do it but I'll show you the techniques and then you can apply it to your own model or your own models that you do yourself. And we want to fix the sides because that's where the obvious seams are because we, um, we textured the sides differently than when we did the top. Now this came out looking better than I thought but, um, well, you, you can still tell the seams and the crumbly bit uh, again it came out better than I thought but that's gonna take a little bit of work to get that looking realistic so we're gonna try otherwise it would take a complete well not a complete retexture but we'd have to choose a different uh, texture for the crumbly bit but I decided on this piece because it had a little pit in there so I wanted that to be a part of it. Now the first thing I want to mention is um, when you import this into your game engine it is not going to look like this. It is going to look like this. It's going to be smooth shaded so we have to set it to smooth shading to get the actual look. So when you import it into your game engine you're not going to have um, the flat shaded option and you're not going to have the option to change it between flat and shade. It's going to be smooth shaded just like this. So there's not much difference but there is minor differences. Sometimes for the positives, sometimes negatively. Like you can see now that the seam right in here where there's that geometry, it's a lot harder to pick out. This one right here where the where the curvature starts. So that's for the for the positive it's a benefit but places like the uh the bevels it makes it a lot harder because they become they become uh a lot harsher the seams but anyways let's get into some texture painting and try to fix this up so we'll hop into texture paint mode and bring up our toolbar with T. And so basically what texture painting does is essentially it's replacing Photoshop at the moment. I could do this in Photoshop, but what texture painting does is exactly as it sounds. If I was to take green and then take the standard draw brush and paint green all over this and then open up the UV image editor. Whoops, wrong one. and then open up that image, our, uh, our diff that we're using, you can see that it's now actually on that texture and we would save it out, but we don't want that obviously, so I'm gonna undo that. What we do want, however, is we want to use the clone brush. Now, Photoshop does have its own clone brush. I'm gonna bump the strength up to 100 and I'm gonna set my pen pressure to radius. I'm gonna use my tablet for this, but um, you can use your, your mouse, but however, the, the things, the important things I want to go over first before we get started is um, using a texture for a brush. Because by standard, you just use a very soft, um, I guess there's no way to really show it, but you just use a standard round soft brush. And um, so if I was to just use my mouse and drag, or sorry, first you have to, you see if I click, I don't get a 3D cursor and we need a clone source just like we do in Photoshop. So to do that, you uh, you press control and then you click and you see my 3D cursor pops up. That's where it's going to clone from. So you see if I drag my brush, it's now cloning that area right there. So that's how that works in Blender. And you can see how we can use that to kind of eliminate seams. Um, but you'll see how if I just drag, it, same way in Photoshop, you're essentially just getting a duplication and your seam's going to end up 
on this face instead, which is kind of defeating the purpose. You can see we, we still have that seam showing up. So the way around this is to use a textured brush. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit new to make a new brush texture. Then over here under the textures tab, we're going to open up um, brush texture. And by default, it goes to image or movie, but we're going to change that to clouds. We're going to choose hard so that there's a bit more variety in it. And then just play with it to get as much variety in your texture as you can. So I like to take the depth all the way up. I like to change it to um, one of the Veroni. I don't even know how to pronounce it. I never have. Veronin. Veronoi. Veronoi. Uh, F2 looks the best in my opinion, F3 is a little bit too um, white, there's not enough contrast. You want a lot of contrast but not too much, so that's why F2 is a good medium. And you can play with the size, you don't want it too soft but you don't want it very, very hard like that either. So you want a nice medium, um, a little bit over stock is usually pretty good about yeah zero to no six five i think will work just fine and the nabla doesn't have any effect on the clouds so you don't need to worry about that so that is good there you can see now over here it's it's using this texture for our clone brush so now if i uh, if i do this it's going to use that uh texture as my brush and you'll see we get a lot smoother results and i'm i'm clicking and holding which is not the recommended method but you'll see how we get much better results and that seems almost disappeared completely the method i recommend is what we we did before in photoshop and that is to kind of click and clone spots especially when it comes to concrete textures but you can still do small small um draggings with your mouse small strokes i guess you would say um and yeah that gets you that effect so you would do that over the whole thing i'm gonna undo that however and i am gonna bring my tablet out here in a second all right we should be good to go um the other thing is the curve you can adjust that so by stock it just uses a nice smooth curve but you could change it to something like this uh this this peak one and it, it's gonna have a different effect um some are just gonna be smoother some are gonna be harsher and you're gonna get you're gonna get a different effect with each one some are gonna make you lose details some are gonna keep the details so i like to use this uh peaked one the, the standard one works too. There's very minor differences, but I like to use this uh, this peak one here, and um, again the textured brush, and we're using the clone brush at full at full strength, and then just set a decent radius. I'm gonna use my pen pressure for that, and then basically you just go to town. So yeah, I'm gonna just time lapse this essentially. I'll show you the base. I'll show you one or two lines, and then um and then I'll show you. Or then I'll time lapse the rest. I'll do all the edges. I'm gonna go over them roughly. I'm not gonna do a perfect job, but I'm just gonna do it as quickly as I can. And then I'm gonna show you how to get this looking like it's part of the concrete. Because right now you can tell that that's obviously a separate texture. But anyways, let's get started on getting rid of this this um, seam from the actual photo. So I'm just gonna Control Click up here, and I'm gonna grab my tablet quick. And so what you want to do is yeah set set your uh, set your clone source over there and then yeah you just want to you just want to do some some strokes and try to get rid of that seam and when you start when you start getting a good result just continue with it but when it starts to look a little off like right here it changes these scratches maybe set it back to an area with scratches and maybe try to continue these scratches you know through that texture try to and then just reset it and just play with it and just try to get rid of these seams I'm actually going to set my brush size slightly bigger so that my pen pressure is going to start out a bit bigger yeah there we go that's easier to work with so yeah just work with that and uh you'll get rid of the seam so that's how you would do it for something that's an image seam like that now when it comes to it you can see already the difference pretty much gone there you can still see it right there however when it comes to uh geometry seams it can get a lot harder so you can see on the side here for example this is a very good example because we have high contrast right here 
and low contrast on the rest of the texture so we need to try to eliminate that as much as possible because we used a di different well from the same image but a different part of the texture for the end caps as we did from the sides and the top so it's it's the same concept however we're still going to control click to select a source we can see it's lighter down here and this is the only dark part in the area really so i'm just going to try to uh to equalize the contrast essentially by cloning so i'm just going to just gonna try to uh, get rid of it. I'm gonna use a very heavy brush stroke and just sh quickly show you how you can get rid of that stroke. So you, I didn't want to clone that, but this just gives you an example how now you can you can barely see that there's that geometry seam there. And if we continue again, I'm not gonna choose a new clone source. I'm just gonna quickly show you with a little bit of work especially with concrete textures, they're very easy. That's why I wanted to do this one first. I'm gonna, I'd wanna get rid of these, these ones that cloned four times, that's very obvious, but you can see now that that geometry seam is almost gone. Whereas if we go down here, that's very apparent. So yeah, I'm gonna time lapse this. Obviously, like I said, every texture is different depending on where you chose your pieces from and such, but I'm gonna try to eliminate as much as possible. Like the seam right here, the photo seam, I'm going to try to limit the ge geometry seams and then we will work on the actual uh, cutout and I'll show you some tricks to make it look very realistic using just textures and we're going to we're gonna go back into Photoshop for that most likely. But I do like doing um, the clone brushing within Blender, it's, it's very powerful and it allows you to work in a 3D view rather than a 2D view and there are programs like uh, Mari that do this very well or even ZBrush to a degree but hey blender does it too not to maybe the professional degree but it does it very well so anyways i am going to get started on my cloning and you can just watch and enjoy and maybe i'll just put some cheesy music on or whatever so yeah i'm just gonna i'm gonna get this looking as good as i can Alright, so you can see we've essentially eliminated all of the uh, harsh geometry scenes with just a little bit of work. I don't know, maybe 10 minutes of work here. Um, I don't quite remember, but not very much at all. And we've, yeah, we've eliminated basically all of the geometry scenes. The only thing that was uh, giving me some heck is just right in here. It's kind of being a son of a gun and I don't know if there's any real easy way to fix that other than... Uh, going into Photoshop and retexturing it. You can try to hide it with some darker textures, but it's still gonna show up depending on the lighting. So there's a few times that this isn't gonna work perfectly depending on the way it's uh, the geometry is, but for the most part, we've eliminated all scenes and it looks a lot, a lot more natural now. So I'm quite happy with the result. You can see how I, like, I stretch the dirt around a little bit or and such and like this stain now stretches around onto here and just little things like that um, helps eliminate the uh, helps eliminate the, the seams so the only thing left that's harsh now is well I guess up here too there's a little bit of a little bit of change that we could do to make it look a little bit more melded but I've shown you enough I think you get the basic idea I don't need to really work on that too much I'm quite happy with the way it looks as it is more or less um but yeah the only thing that's really harsh that's left is the cutout right here the the crumbled off bit so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a slightly smaller radius and I'm gonna clone the edges just a little bit and then we're gonna hop and we're gonna save the image and then we're gonna hop into Photoshop and we're gonna do a couple cool things to make it look like it's uh
look like it's actually broken off and not just uh, texture slapped on there. So let's uh, let's grab our clone brush exactly the same, just I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush size and we'll see if we can't blend it in a little bit and then we're going to use a quick technique in Photoshop. So let's see what I can do here. I'm going for just very small details, just trying to just barely blend this together. We could even lower the strength in this case. And this would be the rare case where you'd want to lower the strength possibly. But as you can see, it's it's quite hard to blend textures in together like in an area like this. Since the contrast is just so different. I mean, yeah, you can see that we've uh, we've softened it definitely, and it looks a little bit better, but it still doesn't look like it was totally cut out. So let's move on to the next step. Let me just put my tablet away. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this image in Photoshop. So or we're gonna save this image and open it in Photoshop. So I'm just gonna back out of texture paint mode, and I'm going to open up the UV slash image editor again. And we are gonna take that image that we just created. So all the I'm going to tab into edit mode so we get our UVs back and I'm just going to open up the what we're working on so all the changes we made have propagated I don't even need the UVs on top actually have propagated on top like you can see here now how well that's um the effect that it's done it's you can see the change definitely for sure you can see where the outline of that is if I select it you can see how it's uh it's it's drawn onto inside of the geometry so you it's propagated onto our image but we need to change we need to make that look a little more natural it looks fine but i'm a little bit picky so i want to see if i can't make it look a little bit better with the technique so let's save this out so we're going to take this exact image and we're just going to save it so image save image and that'll just copy right over it or you can save another copy if you want but i'm going to use concrete diff as my uh image for my game engine unity and for in blender so let's pop back into photoshop and we'll open our image back up we'll actually we'll open our psd up i uh i didn't highlight this in the previous video but uh i i just saved what we had done as a psd so i'll show you what, what i did so yeah i just saved it as concrete uv.psd and so all that did was it had our uh, our diffuse group which had the bottom the crumble bit the ends and the sides and the white background and our UVs. So the diffuse group, it doesn't have our changes. So we need to open that up as well. So I'm just gonna open that up. And I'm gonna select it and copy it. And I'm gonna paste it right into our diffuse group. So now we can essentially, we could get rid of these extra layers. I'm gonna hide them so I know that I don't need them. But uh, now layer one has all the changes. So I'm just gonna, call this um cloned in blender i can just say text painted diff just so that we know and um so this will be our semi-final version so we're going to put our uvs back on so we know what geometry we're working with and it would have been smarter to take this piece of geometry or Photoshop's being weird today. Anyways, it would have been smarter to take this uh, crumbly bit of geometry and actually connect it to this in here the same way we did, we did with the sides, the top, or sorry, the front, the, the front, the top, and the back, I guess. But uh, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. So what we're gonna do is we're going to darken just inside the lines of the crumbly bit here so that piece of geometry with the with the burn tool and then we're going to dodge so we're going to lighten it essentially 
where that where that crumbly bit fits in there so we're gonna just dodge that lightly and it might take a little bit of experimentation like i said because it is separate but we should be able to get a better effect by doing this so i'm gonna bring out the uh we're gonna start with the burn tool i'm gonna use uh, 50 yeah the stock setting should be fine and you can see that if i do that it just darkens it slightly so that's exactly what i want so yeah i'm just gonna do some strokes i don't need a brush quite that big and in this case, um, it doesn't really matter what kind of brush we use. And in fact, we don't want a grungy brush, but we don't want we don't want to darken the whole thing. We just want to darken the very edges. I'm forgetting I can use the hotkeys, the square brackets. So I'll just dodge the edges a little bit, and you can try to get a similar effect. So I'm trying to trying to use my uh, my mouse pad as a tablet. So yeah, we're just gonna darken up the uh, the edges. Just ever so slightly, just a couple passes around. So I'm going to do one more pass. And you can vary your stroke a little bit, give it a little bit of a wiggle or whatever. You don't want it to be a perfect line around, but based on the geometry, it won't be anyways. So we can hide our UV layer just to give a kind of preview. We can see that we've darkened the edge a little bit, and we'll once we get it in Blender, we'll see if this actually created a positive effect or a negative effect. It's much easier if it's attached to the geometry here, but we should be able to achieve a similar uh level of quality this way so now we're going to bring out our dodge tool and i'm pretty sure the gimp has similar tools if not we're basically in some way you just want to lighten and darken um these parts and we could do this in blender too but just photoshop makes it easier but if photoshop makes a mess of it we could give it an attempt in blender too so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna use the dodge brush now you can see which lightens everything and i'm just gonna very slightly lighten the edges where this crumbly bit would be i'm going for a very slight effect here the burn i wanted it to be more more apparent but the dodge not so much i think this is where the geometry is I'm just going to do one more stroke, just barely letting my brush go over the border because I'm not 100% sure where the geometry is. So I'm just going to guess like that. It might take a little bit of trial and error, but you can definitely see um, how that's light. Now, that might even be too much in itself. So we'll save this out and we'll, uh, we'll give it a try. So we'll just uncheck our UVs again. We'll hide them and we'll just save this back as concrete diff.png. So I'm going to save this back out and I'm replace it. You could keep a bunch of different versions going and try different versions, but there's always the undo tool in Photoshop, and we always have the uh, the la the original layers to go back to if we wanted to. So yeah, I'm just going to replace it. And then we'll hop back into Blender once it's done saving. Come on, there we go. All right. So now we're just going to uh, refresh our image. So we're going to go Image. Reload image and you'll see our changes show up and so You can see oh yeah, it didn't quite get the effect. I wanted it's much much too extreme or apparent the burn worked quite well, but I or Actually, no the dodging worked a bit better than the burning did But I think I burned a little too hard. You can, that's that looks much too fake now But you can see what the the effect I was trying to get where it looks like this is this was broken off, but we could uh we could play with uh, Blender's texture painting a bit more. And now I'm going by the seat of my pants because uh, this is different every time I've recorded this. But let's try using... Well, I'll start with the clone brush and see if we can't get a little bit of smoothness back. And then maybe we'll try a few of the other brushes. But we still want to use the texture to get some variety in there. So I'm just going to redo the cloning process and see what the look ends up being. I think it'll get rid of most of our work that we've attempted.
Yeah, essentially that's uh, gotten rid of the effect. But you understand the, the idea of what I was trying to get where it was slightly lighter on the edges and slightly darker on the inside. It definitely it would have been much better if I had the geometry attached in the UV island. So maybe I will just call that a mistake. Again, I'm not gonna re-record the whole thing over that, but that would create a lot more realism if we had done that. Either way, I'm quite happy with this. Um I think it looks it looks fairly realistic. This 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 doesn't quite fit the the grain I might I would maybe rotate the texture slightly in Photoshop there's there is kind of a grain to concrete so it'd be something like that just an example I'm not gonna go into that I'm not gonna waste time on that but you get the general idea so you 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 want it to look as natural as possible right now it looks like essentially the grain of the concrete with the with the broken bit is going horizontally whereas the grain of the concrete and the rest is going vertically so it looks a little bit unrealistic but you know what it's just a prop I'm not gonna worry too much about it and again I could always create another version I could always redo it it's not too hard um, so yeah that is how you use the clone brush to do some texture painting in Blender. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna resave the changes we've made in, sorry, uncomfortable chair is just killing me today. I'm gonna resave these changes we just made, so I'm just gonna simply go back into the image editor and save these out just as we did before. Save image, and then reopen it in Photoshop. Should probably just open recent and it would work. Yep, that brought our changes, so we can uh, we can just merge that down to to basically um, overwrite that layer. And so, whoops, don't want to move that. Um, what we want to do now, bring up our UVs again. Let's add some interest to this. So if we hop on Google. This is where I am going to bring up some reference images. We'll just search up uh, concrete barrier construction, maybe. I guess they're called a Jerry barrier, a, a Jersey barrier. I, uh, I never knew that I actually had a name. So you can see that for the most part they're very clean, but a lot of them have um, this yellow streak on them. Let's see here, what else do they do to them sometimes? I have seen the plastic ones. Um, I know a lot of times the companies paint their logos on, yeah, just like that. So I'm gonna open that as an example, and this one as an example. So for the most part, yeah, they keep them clean or they put that one little construction stripe on them that's very grungy. And uh, then they usually just spray paint with a stencil their their company logo on there. So let's do that for a little bit of fun and interest. So we know that this side is the front. So we are going to simply make a new layer. So I'm going to go layer, new layer. Or you could just hit the button down there. Sorry, I went to my other screen, the button down here to make a new layer. I'm just going to call this, uh, you could call it anything. I'm going to call it paint. And this is going to be over top. So we're going to just take our marquee tool. So that's M is the hotkey. And we're going to make a selection. We could, we'll go back to Blender just to decide where. We want to edit mode so we know where our geometry is. We could put it right on the base. I'm going to put it on this this little angled bit right here so that would be the first second third piece of geometry so if we go back into Photoshop we can tell that that would be one two they'd be right in this big piece right here so I'm gonna zoom into that area and I'm just gonna marquee selection right across there a nice even little strip and I'm gonna pick a color that I like. It could be any color, essentially. It could be like a company color, for example. I could make it like, say, Blender Tech Blue, but construction yellow is pretty standard. It's kind of a, it's a yellow with a slight um, orange tint. I use it in my intros um, as a color sometimes, and I use it for um, a lot of my construction models for my construction sandbox simulator game that I'm working on. So yeah, something like that, kind of a slightly, uh, 
it's like a slightly orangey yellow with the value turned down a bit so something like that the hex code is down there if you want that exact color but anyways we're just gonna fill that selection right in with it however that brings us a problem that would look very very unrealistic we we want we want to see the concrete show through it so there's a little trick to uh to get this very quickly or to get this effect very quickly i mean so the effect we're looking for here is um the one on the original one this this very faded painted look but you can tell it was painted on at one time but it's it's faded and it's kind of it's uh it's eroded where there's a uh what would you call those not a uh, voids voids in the mold and such so to get that 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 effect very quickly in Photoshop I'm sure you could do something similar in the GIMP again what we want to do is go to our layer below this so we could even hide the painted layer for now and we want to go to select uh, color range and this will allow us to basically select the color so we're just going to select a mid-tone nothing too dark nothing too light something in the middle that basically covers the the majority of this this uh, area in here. So I'm going to select this, uh, I don't know, I'm just, just going to click at random essentially. You'll see it's selected uh, a variety of area in here. So what we can do is we can just play with the fuzziness. We don't want all of it. We don't want none of it, but we want just somewhere, somewhere in the middle. And you can, uh, you can do a preview selection too, and it'll show you on your image exactly what it is or is not selecting. So we probably want something around, depending how grungy you want. If you want it really grungy, you'd want to select a lot. If you wanted it hardly grungy, you'd just select a little. So I'm going to go somewhere in the middle, about, yeah, about 40, somewhere around stock. We'll do that. It'll look, it'll actually look very grungy, maybe a little bit lower. So we'll go for about 28 to start and hit OK. And so you'll see that selected these uh, these slightly darker areas. If I hit delete, you'll see what areas it's selected. So if we if we reapply our paint area or our paint layer and then select that layer and hit delete, it's going to delete those sections out of it. So if we hit Control D to deselect, you'll see we now have that very grungy look. And so that looks very or a lot more realistic. You can you can really see the difference in the the side versus right here and if we untake the UVs it, you can see that look the only problem is it's still quite bright so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up the uh, the hue saturation panel control U and I'm just gonna bring the saturation down a little bit to give it kind of that faded look a little bit we could play with the lightness too, either lighter or darker depending just a little bit maybe a little bit more T saturated and so yeah that gets that effect and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure it's on the other side as well so it looks even no matter which way we would place it in our game engine so I'm gonna bring the UVs back up and I'm just gonna duplicate the paint layer by dragging it to the new layer or I think uh, what is it control J duplicates it yeah so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag this down to where it would be on the other side and just for interest, I'm going to just flip it or something. So maybe flip horizontally. And maybe I'll give it a vertical flip just for fun. And so now we've created a bit more interest. So this is step one of creating interest on the texture. So I'm just going to save this out just to see what it looks like. This is what I like to do so that I'm not making any errors and not realizing it and also make sure that the paint isn't going over anything but we're good it's not overlapping so i'm just going to resave this and see what it looks like in blender we will we'll get back to some more texture painting here in a minute so oh oh it's already open right there now it should work all right we'll let it save and then we'll hop back into blender saving very slowly okay and we'll just go image reload Alt R is the hotkey for that, and you can see we now have a very nice looking grungy paint look. A little bit fat in my opinion, I would, should have made that a little bit smaller, and I still could, but I, I like the look of that, that's very cool. And it does go on the bevel, so we could have either gotten rid of that or 
we could keep it and we could still use the uh, texture painting to make it kind of go on the other side but I don't think they would paint on the sides usually although you could go all the way around if you wanted that look it really depends on how you want it to look and in my opinion I would probably want it a little bit more grungy than this so I would have selected I would have made it um, slightly uh, less fuzzy so it would have selected more but it, it's cool in the way that you can see how you can see the patches through the paint. It won't look as good on the other side, but it still looks still looks fairly nice. But from the front, it, I like the look of that. So um, up next, I'm gonna we're gonna put a really quick company logo on here. So same kind of idea. Just gonna put the UVs back on. We know it's on this face right here. Um, it's just gonna have to be flipped. But there's a cool stencil that I've been using, or a font that is a stencil that I've been using for a lot of my uh, construction models that ships with Windows and it is called, what is it called? Yeah, Stencil Standard Bold, so Stencil STD Bold, so you'll see if I, uh, if I make a layer, not in that color obviously, let's do uh, black, we'll go like a dark gray actually. We'll just type in uh, BT Construction LTD. I make that, uh, you know what, that's a good size. And so we are going to now simply accept that and we're going to flip it. So we're just going to go transform, flip vertically so that it'll. Actually, it'll have to be flipped horizontally, too. I'm just trying to think. Yeah, I think it'll have to be flipped horizontally and vertically. So I'm going to flip that horizontally. That should read properly, yeah. And um, the cool thing is when we get to making our diffuse layer, we're going to make sure that these two layers stick out. So we want to keep them as separate layers for now. But anyways, I'm going to resave this out one last time before we get into making the other textures, just to see what it looks like. So bolt R. Oh, I accidentally left the UVs on it. Whoops. I won't do that next time, but you get the idea. So it's got that logo stenciled on there nicely. And if we wanted to, I'm going to turn off the UVs. We could do the exact same thing. We could. All right, so we're going to color range with our diffuse layer selected. We're just going to select an average color from that layer. We'll hit OK and see what we get. And then we'll turn on our construction uh, text color. We'll go to that layer, hit delete, and then deselect. Alt D, or sorry, Control D, and you'll see it's gotten rid of uh, some of our text, so it looks like it's worn as well. I'm not going to put it on the other side, make it have a little bit more interest and not so symmetrical. So that is the basics. That is our diffuse layer. So um, I could, again, I could, uh, we could merge all these layers, but I'm going to keep them like that. I'm just going to, I'm going to collapse that group, the diffuse group. And I'm going to save this off because I accidentally saved the UVs on the last one. I will give it one final preview before we get into making the next textures. There we go. It should be saved. Reload image. And there we have it. So you can just barely read out the BT Construction LTD. I like to look at that a lot. All right. So now we need to create some more texture maps. So I've done some research. And in my case, the Unity game engine, let me just open up the document. So the Unity engine, um, if you want to get the fully normal map specular, you need one base texture. So that is our diffuse layer that we made. And then it just says with an alpha channel for a specular map, but that doesn't matter. We're going to make a specular map as we would regularly because there's lots of tutorials on how to take a normal specular image and turn it into the alpha or put it in the alpha channel that Unity likes. So this completely depends on which game engine you're using. So I'm not going to go into Unity specific. I'm just using this as an example and it says we need one normal map and again unity 
will is able to use a grayscale image and it converts it to a normal map automatically and you're able to flip it and adjust it and whatever so again it depends on your um, game engine if your game engine doesn't support things like this then maybe you would want to take your diffuse map and just use shader map it's much quicker but I'm going to show you how to make the specular map uh, manually and we're also going to do the normal map or bump map height map whatever excuse me you want to call it in this instance it's not a technical normal map but it will get turned into a normal map basically the same way as crazy bumper shader map or x normal or whatever would work so to do that we're going to use our diffuse texture i'm just going to zoom out so we can see the whole thing and it gets quite quick from here really because we've done all the work this is our texture we just need to uh, create the specular and we need the uh, the normal map, the the bump map. So I'll show you how to do uh, which one first. Um, we'll do the uh, the height map, the bump map, the normal map, whatever you want to call it, just because it'll make the most. Uh, it'll it'll create the most effect on um, the specularity map you want obviously for realism but making a, a bump map is gonna make the most effect so let's just duplicate our diffuse um, group you can't drag it to new layer I don't believe you can hit uh, control J oh yeah you can so control J uh, will create a copy of it so that has all our details in there so that's perfect. We want an exact copy, an exact copy, an exact copy. I'm just going to turn off our diffuse layer, and I'm going to call this um, bump map or height map, whatever you want to call it, bump map. I'm going to call it a bump map though, because it's not a normal map. It is a bump map that will get turned into a normal map. It's technically a height map. So what we're going to do is we're going to play with the levels and curves. So if you know how these um, work, basically pure white is um is the highest point and pure black is the lowest point so as a quick example i would want the um i would want the paint to be slightly darker than the rest of it and um anything like the holes the dark bits i would want to be the darkest so that they're like little holes they look like little holes so we're gonna get that effect and it's gonna look much better in blender so we can't use a color map like this for that obviously though so how do we get that well again we play with the levels and curves first of all however we need to desaturate it so what we're gonna do I'm gonna merge the the, the painted stripe layers and I'm gonna keep the text layer I'm going to keep all these three layers separate, but I'm going to still desaturate them, obviously. So, shift Control u It's already black. shift Control u And shift Control u So now, we want um, a nice mid-tone to be um, over the, most of the image. Whereas, again, we want the painted layer and the text to be slightly um slightly higher than the rest of it and we want all the dark bits to be to stay dark so let's play with the levels first so i'm going to go image adjustments levels that's control l and we just need to play with it till we get a nice middle gray tone so i'm working with the diffuse map first we'll do the actually we can hide these for now so we're going to work with the diffuse map first We want to play with the levels again till we get a nice. Remember that white is the highest and black is the lowest. So we want those black bits to look like they're actually embedded in there. And then we just want a nice mid tone. And you might have to do some adjustments and save and resave over and over till you get what you like. Um, but you'll want a nice mid tone for your for your neutral gray. So one problem I have picked up from this image though just at this point is that there's a lot of contrast in it so this is really going to affect our, our uh, I don't want to say geometry but it's going to really affect the look of our model but we'll see what it looks like. I think I generally have the levels pretty good here. You want to you wanna pull the black up pretty far and uh, you want to have your mid-tone closer to black so that it's a nice medium gray and then yeah you want your whites to be a 
boat right where they start on the curb or the level sorry and you could even turn the whites down a bit just to get you into that medium gray zone I, I don't know exactly what the medium gray is that's why it, sometimes it takes a bit of experimentation but somewhere around maybe a little later somewhere around there I'm gonna assume is good so yeah all the dark parts are gonna be low and all the white parts are gonna be higher so let's hit OK and we can play with the curves too to get rid of some of that contrast so you're working in from your black and your white just creating points so we could um we could cut the black down a little bit oh, i'm not a master with curves in photoshop you can see how that really gets rid of a lot of the contrast so we have a lot more of an overall just average gray however it still keeps the highlights and um blacks for the most part i think i went a little extreme in that i might drag these back just a little bit yeah we'll try that for now again it's this is really where it, when i say it's trial and error it is it definitely is trial and error unless you're using an automatic generation program again like crazy bump or whatever but now for the painted and uh text bits right now well, actually, they'd work pretty decent how they are. It's just that the uh, the text would be imprinted. It'd be like it was um, it'd be like it was cast in there, and we want it to be painted. So we want to take this middle gray color. So I'm actually going to use the uh, the color picker. Where is it? And I'm just going to choose this middle gray. I'm actually going to take a a huge sample. So 100 one by 101 average of just this average gray and it gives me a yellow color that's highly odd oh is it sampling all layers no oh it's because i'm sampling this layer you want to sample the 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 layer that we just worked on so you can see that gets that nice average gray color so yeah i'm going to use this gray color as our i'm going to assume it's our midpoint so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the uh the text first i'm going to go into color overlay and i'm going to overlay that color so i'm just going to click on it here in the in the swatch and then it'll overlay that color so right now it'll just kind of be as if it's stuck on the surface but i want it to look like it's um like it's just a hair uh, above the surface so we just want to lighten it up a little bit so i'm gonna make it you know maybe not well not that much that'll really jump out but make it make it a fair amount lighter to get the effect well we'll stick with a, something like that and see how it looks and so i'm gonna i'm gonna copy this new colors hex code just like that and then i'm gonna do this well i guess i could just copy the uh the actual layer style so I'm just going to copy the layer style and I'm going to apply it to the paint layer as well. So you'll see we have the same effect. So now the paint should be essentially sticking out the same amount. And since we have no details on the rest of the UVs, that'll be good just like that. So I'm going to save this as our spec map. So I'm going to go file, save as, PNG, and this is concrete underscore spec, or sorry, not spec, um disk for displacement you could call it bump norm whatever i'm gonna call it displacement just because that's the blender standard and that's the nomenclature i use use whatever nomenclature you use that's what i use but anyways i'm gonna save that out we're gonna pop back into blender and we'll see what this gives us as a result so i'm gonna give us some screen real estate and i'm gonna open up the node editor for this and then we simply need to use that image texture as our displacement map so i'm just going to create some room here so first i'm going to load up that texture so i'm going to add i'm going to add um sorry a image texture and i'm going to open it so that is our concrete displacement texture and we want to make sure that we change it to non-color data so that blender knows that it's a 
non-color image. So with our image texture imported, our displacement map, very simply, all we're going to do is add in, you could just connect color straight to displacement, but to add a little bit of uh, ability to play with this, we're going to add in a color uh, mix node. And now this is only for Blender, this wouldn't affect your image at all, so you'd have to go and change it in Photoshop for using it in the game engine, but this will allow you to uh, change it so you can see it in Blender just to show the effect. So we'll just plug it into the bottom and the first color you want to be pure white. And then we want this to be multiply. And then just drag color over to displacement. You know, you won't see anything in this view, we have to go into render view for this. And I'm going to turn on my lamp so we can see a bit better. Maybe turn up the strength of it even. Measure in watts. So I'm going to make this like a thousand watt light bulb. So you can see immediately how we went a little extreme, but you can you get you can see how the displacement makes it look as if all the scratches are actually there and how the paint is actually off the surface. So that's that's what that effect essentially does, and you can see how our uh, our uh, little what would you call it our uh, so our knocked our cut off bit looks looks a bit more damaged too and you can play with the factor then to get either extreme or you can cut it down to nothing where, you, where it was originally or you can give it just a little bit because we obviously went quite we had way too much contrast in our image so something like there would be maybe a good good place to be at maybe a little bit higher I'd go like maybe 0 0.1 but this would only be for Blender again, and you can see we obviously made that way too light, so I would definitely make that darker. But if we get rid of that node completely and just connect color to displacement, that would show you what it would look like in the game engine. So obviously we would need to uh, we would need to uh, take the take the uh, we need to equalize the uh, the the levels. We need to play with the curves and levels in Photoshop or your image editor of your choice to, uh, to equalize this out a, bit, a little bit. This is obviously way too extreme. It's it's. it's a little bit too too much uh, I think you would agree yeah. so um, I'm not gonna do that again that would take up more time but y you see how the displacement map affects that obviously and I guess by being like, extreme it definitely shows off the effect so lastly we're gonna create our specularity map I'm just gonna save this just to be safe so we don't lose anything I'm just gonna save it as concrete I'm gonna hit the plus sign to add a one and we'll hop back into Photoshop. And so our four displacement map, it's very similar. So I am going to, again, I'm gonna turn this layer off and I'm gonna make a copy. I'm gonna, first I'm gonna call this layer, um, this was our displacement, I forgot to name that. I'm gonna copy our diffuse layer again. So Control J, put, up, put it up top and I'm gonna call it specular. So it's very similar to the displacement map. Let's turn it on so we can see. In that we need to um we need to um desaturate everything. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna merge the uh, paint layers and I'm just gonna desaturate everything. So what was that? Control shift U? Yeah. So I'm gonna desaturate everything. And so in the case of the uh, the specularity map, everything that or pure white is basically 100% shiny and completely black. So pure black means there's no shininess at all. So again, it works basically the same way um, as a displacement map. It just instead of adjusting the the height essentially it adjusts the specularity so again we're just going to play with the curves and the levels to get the effect we want the major difference being that it's going to be mostly dark so let's play with the uh, levels first we're on the wrong layer of our it's not painted diff I guess but yeah that the layer right there we want to play with the levels this time and yeah we want it a lot darker I'm just gonna bring these in to where the data starts and I'm gonna take my midtone and turn it way down 
We don't want it. We don't want it to look very glossy. Concrete is very non-glossy. If you've ever seen concrete before, which I assume you have. So yeah, I'm really going to turn it down, but there's going to be a few areas where there will be specularity. So we'll do something like that. And again, it might take some trial and error, just as we saw in our displacement map, it, it had way too much contrast. So we would have had to play with it some more. Um, and we can play with the curves too. That extreme. So we have some highlights in some places and um, maybe too much highlights. But for the most part, it's quite dark because concrete doesn't reflect a lot. So I'm going to do something like that. And um, again, for the paint, we want that to be slightly more reflective. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to do a color overlay. And I'm just going to choose that nice uh, mid-tone gray. But this time we want it to be a bit darker. We want, it, we want it to reflect slightly more light, but not a ton, because paint is more reflective than concrete, but it's not like super glossy. Again, it depends if you have like super clean paint, obviously you would want it slightly brighter. So again, depends on depends on uh, how, how you apply your texture and your image and how you want it to look in the end. So I'm gonna do something like that. And the, uh, the text, uh, I'll do this one manually. I'll take the gray again, and maybe, maybe just for example's sake, we'll make that really, really glossy. Maybe I should have done it the other way around. Moa, we'll make it look really glossy, even though it's uh, in black text. So hit OK. And at any point, if your game engine is giving you problems with the background, you can always just uh, get rid of the background completely and make it transparent. In our case, we would have to actually take the the texture and we'd have to get rid of this these gray parts. We'd actually have to delete them to get rid of that. If and then and undo the background if your uh, game engine or blender was giving you issues with the background but so far i haven't had any issues with that so i'm going to leave it just like that and we are going to save this as our specular uh, specularity map so yeah we got our specular uvs aren't on perfect so i'm just going to save as and i've really kind of flown over this i know it's a longer tutorial again but there, there is a lot of trial and error when it comes to this to get the perfect amount of specularity and the perfect amount of displacement. Again, the example is I used way too much displacement. It was way too bumpy. So this is going to be concrete spec for specularity. Let's save that out. And we'll do our final one very quickly in Blender. So this one is fairly easy as well. All we're going to do is give ourselves a bit more room. I'm going to bring this one way over there. We're going to add in a glossy shader and put it right below the diffuse. We need a mix shader just like you would do a normal material and connect them together. And for the factor, that's where we're going to use our, um, our specular texture. So I'm going to open that up. Concrete spec. And then essentially you would just take the color and put it right into the factor. And so you can see now that the light is reflecting off of the, uh, the paint. On this side it'll be really apparent. It's reflecting off the paint, it's reflecting off the lighter parts, but the darker parts stay kind of shadowy. That it's really apparent at the bottom where, where it was quite dark. And you don't see it so much on this side. Uh, let me just flip the light around so I can show you how it works on the text. Let's see, where is our light? Let's just grab it along the Y and grab it along the X. Can you rotate? 
point lapse? No, didn't think so. So, anyways, back to render mode should work. So you can see how the uh, the text is really really glossy. Again, the bump map's kind of getting in the way if we uh, if we turn that off because it's if it's way too distracting. You can see how the uh, the text is really uh, reflecting a lot of light. It should be completely black, but you can see how it's uh, it's very reflective. If we uh, if we turn that off by pressing M, you can see how it would look normally. But with our specular map, it looks like that. So you can see how the text should be just plain black, but instead, it's uh, it's quite glossy. So that's not the effect. I, you, actually, that really shows the effect right there. That's not the effect I would want, obviously, uh, because it was black text originally. I would want it quite unspecular, um, unglossy or non-glossy, but I just wanted to illustrate the effect. So that's basically it in terms of the maps, and we didn't need to put them in the blender, but it's a good way to uh, just test them. Um, hopefully you've learned basically how to do some texture painting, how to apply all the different maps, and the only thing left to do so that we can import it in our game engine is just to triangulate the uh, the the mesh, so we're just going to tab into edit mode, we're going to select all faces, hit control T, I'm going to go into the node editor and reapply everything, even though the bump map is extreme, if we go into rendered mode, that is our final object ready for exportation into the game engine of your choice, now obviously I would adjust this, I would, I would, uh, change the specularity of the text because I just use that as an example I would definitely play with the bump map the uh, the displacement map to uh, make it not so extreme it looks quite ridiculous but uh it's the gen it's the general idea behind it and um yeah so our our geometry is completely triangulated by hitting control T so it's all triangles now, as you can see, we have 132 faces, 132 tries, and that hasn't affected the look at all. When it's fully textured, as you can see, nothing's changed. It hasn't created any artifacts or anything. So we are basically good to go. I guess I never cloned the bottom, but again, you never really see it, so it should never, shouldn't really matter, but you can do that if you want. So yeah, that is completely ready for game exportation. All you would do now, I'm just going to save this one more time, hit the plus so I get concrete 2. You would, uh, you would delete the camera, delete the bounding box, delete the lamp, and then just take your concrete uh, block. Now, if you're using Unity, you can export dot blends, but it's very uh, it it takes away from the performance in Unity. So we would uh, we would export it as a dot obj, or you can use Collada. That's another good one that uh, that a lot of game engines support. But obj is basically the standard. And then yeah, basically the stock the stock settings are um, are good. Um, depending on your game engine, you might have to change up. For example, in uh, in Blender is the weird one where it uses Z is up, whereas a lot of other one, a lot of game engines and 3D programs use Y is up, as in the stock settings here. You might have to change the scale, things like that. So that's that's, that's for another tutorial, though. I'm not going to go over all the things now. I just wanted to go over the fact that it is ready for exportation here. So I'm going to. I'm going to do that, I'm going to open Unity quick, and I'm just going to show you the final product, so I'm just going to pause it quickly, and I guess while I'm at it in Photoshop, I'm going to uh, save this, so I'm just saving as concreteuv.psd, so that at any time we can go back and we can adjust our specular, our displacement, or our diffuse maps, all in one file, very handy, little little trick I picked up using groups, so we can close Photoshop for now, because I'm not going to edit the the texture still waiting for unity to load so in unity i was able to import the dot obj and choose a bump diffuse um, material shader and take the diffuse texture and then i took our bump map that we took uh created the grayscale and it automatically converted it to a normal map which uh made it not so extreme but it's slightly bumpy um and 
the specularity again you have to do it a special way in unity you can't just import it as the stock texture as we would in blender so i wasn't able to show that off but yeah basically we got exactly or similar to what we got in blender in unity now and again it depends on your game engine how it would work but this is how it would work say in unity and this one back here um this one is just the dot blend file so as you can see um it's similar it's just the shading is a bit different on it so you'd have to change the settings a bit and other than that it's exactly the same you can do the exact same thing just it takes up more performance than the uh, dot obj did so yeah that is about all there is to this i'm gonna end this tutorial off now i think i've covered everything hopefully you have learned like i said some stuff about texture painting and how to make things uh game asset ready as you can see it imported with no problems at all to the geometry and our textures were applied no problem so anyways thanks for watching from the team here at blendertech.com if you enjoyed this video and learned something consider liking it and don't forget to subscribe for more videos we're now on twitter at twitter.com slash blender underscore tech and facebook at facebook.com slash blender tech page all one word if you want a hard copy of one of our videos just let us know if you dislike this video for some reason don't just hit the thumbs down button and leave please leave us a comment or if it's private email us at info at blendertech.com about what you did not like that way we can continually improve our future videos based on your community input we also take requests for anything so let us know if there's something you'd like to us to go over and we will create a personal video for you anyway see you next time remember create your way